Hello everybody, so here is Black Angel again and I'm here with a short, relatively short video about finding type. So how do you approach the matter of figuring out your type and how do you choose the right and correct type? Uh, this is probably one of the most difficult questions that there is around MBTI because uh, those of you who are actually willing to find the correct type and, are, and who are uh, working on understanding the theory and figuring out how the theory works uh, and that truly want to understand uh, how, uh, what type they are um, and they truly want to learn how to use the theory and how to type others uh, are going to be faced with a lot of difficulties uh, actually pinpointing the type. So the first thing that I'm going to point out about this topic is uh, that to find your type, you have to know who you are. So the first step is, is figuring out who you are. How does that work? Um, there are a lot of things, a lot of uh, stuff uh, about yourself that you know, and there's a lot of stuff that you are not sure about or that you don't know. This is also what makes uh, a lot of tests online very difficult because we don't truly know the answers to these questions. And one of the main reasons why we don't know the answers to these questions and we do not know how we use the functions is uh, that uh, we are not used uh, to thinking in those terms uh, and the definitions are made by someone else and we that was probably thinking about something not probably that was thinking about something very specific and that is delivering very specific descriptions uh, and there is a lot of difficulty not only understanding what this person meant but also figuring out uh, how we apply those things and in which category we actually fall Sorry, I'm very tired. It's It's been a long day. Uh, anyway, mm, what I'm going to focus on, on this uh, in this video is not how to understand what people mean when they describe that specific thing or not, or, or else, uh, but rather um, how do you understand how you use that specific function? For example, if you watch my NI video and you will hear a lot of things and me explaining a lot of things and, make, and making a little bit of throwing a little bit of light on what introverted intuition actually is. But at the same time, all, all, all that information that I'm throwing out there is almost useless if you don't know how it applies to you. So what I'm suggesting here is not only to pay a lot more attention to what is being explained, but also to pay a lot of attention to your behaviors and things that you do. Uh, I'm going to bring you an example, which is the vulnerable function in socionics. Socionics definition of the vulnerable, uh, among the, the, the definitions in socionics uh, of the vulnerable function, there is one that says that it is that thing that we are aware we're not good at and that we are kind of neurotic about, uh, but we do not um, try to improve it in any possible way. And we never spend time on that thing because it clashes with our dominant function. So said like this, it's very complicated. It's not easy to take this definition and go like, Oh, well, then it's that thing that I do all the time. And uh, yeah, because uh, there is that thing specifically that uh, day in, day out, I feel like um, everybody else is better than me at. And uh, I'm not actually good at it. But at the same time, it, and it makes me kind of neurotic. But at the same time, I don't feel like uh, actually working on it or doing anything because it clashes with my main, um, ma ma main skills. That's not something we're used to thinking. It's not something the human mind is set for. And therefore, it leaves uh, the whole concept of the vulnerable function in a complete blur. So we don't truly know what, our what the vulner this vulnerable function is in translated into what our vulner vulnerable function is. 
and this requires a lot of attention so if you start working on yourself and trying to see those things that you actually do and that are distinctive of your personality in some way um, you're going at some point to see recurring patterns so what you're looking for is recurring patterns about yourself so recurring patterns can be uh, like um, okay one very good example is uh, you probably either like or dislike fish uh, some people don't like fish and they cannot eat fish because they truly don't like it and some other people instead are crazy about fish and love fish and uh, they would live on fish so this is a recurring pattern you know that you love or that you hate fish because all your life through you were used to either liking it or not liking it so this is one one example Another example can be, uh, you know if you have difficulties or not studying and what kind of difficulties you have because you have recurring patterns about yourself that tell you that oh, through the, your school years you have been having that kind of difficulty or you haven't had any, any difficulty whatsoever. So that's what you're looking for, patterns about yourself, recurring patterns. Uh, but when it comes to socionics and BDI, or anyway, finding your type, what you're looking for is something much deeper than just a recurring pattern about a behavior that you're keep that you're having. You're looking for those things that you normally say that define you as a person and that you don't give importance to. For example, one, one thing that you might say that um, you don't give importance to is uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to do that because I'm not good at that thing. And you say that as something completely normal, but you don't realize that that thing actually scores as one function or defines one trait of that function. For example, um, what can come to mind is um, I met some ISTJs that are going to tell you stuff like, uh, oh, I'm never, I'm, I never feel very comfortable when people hug me or when people touch me. But they don't realize that that's actually extroverted feeling vulnerable. And they don't realize that the reason why they don't feel comfortable with people hugging them is that they have a difficulty with external manifestations of emotions. And the reason why it is difficult to pinpoint that that's a function is that the, the literature, the theory, doesn't tell you uh, this kind of person is going to have difficulties hugging others or having physical contact with others, because that's not the point. What the theory is going to tell you is that these people have difficulties with external manifestations of affection, uh, of emotions. So the external, external and visible side of uh, emotional expression. So what is emotional expression? That's the question you got to ask yourself. And if you ask yourself what th what that thing might be, you're going to figure out that we're talking about laughing. We're talking about. Um, Hugging, we're talking about anything that transmits emotions. So if someone has difficulties with that, they're going to have difficulties hugging people. They're going to have difficulties uh, laughing with everybody else. So when there is uh, uh, something, when something is going on that they didn't hear. So the difference between an, ex an extroverted feeling type and an extroverted and, 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 in, and an extroverted thinking type is going to be that the extroverted feeling type might start laughing even if they didn't understand what they're laughing for and then they, they might even laugh harder because they don't know what the fuck they're, the, they're laughing about whereas an extroverted thinking type is not going to participate in that that's one big, one, one big difference and here I'm going a little bit astray you know. To, from, from what I wanted to say. But anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is that what the theory describes is not what you're used to living in your everyday life. And a lot of the things that you say on a daily basis about yourself that you don't give importance to, 
that actually represent recurring patterns about yourself are going to be those things that will tell you what your personality type actually is. And it's those things that someone like me spots when you're writing or when you're describing yourself that other people do not spot. Um, so yeah, this is also why I was saying in the other video that uh, other people don't know you. Because another person cannot, cannot possibly, especially on a forum, cannot possibly have the skills to actually figure out if you're saying that because you're having a temporary um, form of um, uh, lack of self-esteem or if you're feeling insecure about the thing in that moment or if you are persuaded to be that way or if you truly are that way. Because one other problem that we never talk about is that whenever we approach forums and people or people come to me or to anyone else asking to be typed, they have a type in mind and they are attempting to look like that type. Even not the way that the type is, but the way that they think that type should be. The, the easiest people to type are those that actually don't ask others to be typed because they're sure about their type. Because these people take a test, uh, label themselves as the type that the, the, the test tells them, and then decide that that type is what they are. So the, instead of understanding the theory and, and understanding what the type is like, they actually take the type and decide that whoever is that type has to be like them. So that's another reason why you shouldn't trust other people, especially on forums uh, and on, uh, on Facebook groups and so on. So yeah, what can you do to actually find your type? First of all, understand yourself, uh, start working on yourself, start figuring out recurring patterns about yourself. Then there's going to be another thing that you can do, but I'm going to tell you uh, a little later, um, uh, in a few weeks, maybe later on. Anyway, this is everything I have for now, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.